I'm glad to welcome you. Today we will talk about the most unreliable cars. The appearance of the Mazda RX-8 is impressive. She is already more than a dozen years old, and the body still looks stylish today. The main drawback of the RX-8 is the motor. Under the hood hides a rotary beast with a ridiculous volume of 1.3 liters, issuing 231 horsepower with. Mazda goes fast, but not for long. Engines live up to 100,000 kilometers, and then you can safely get rid of the car. Sangyong Action 2 is a car that primarily attracts attention with a low price, a fairly modern design and Korean origin. Action 2 is offered in the secondary market with two 2.0-liter engines, gasoline and diesel, each of which has a number of significant problems. The gasoline unit is weak with the timing system, which in critical cases does not withstand even 50 to 60,000 km with all the ensuing consequences. And the diesel engine has an extremely capricious Delphi fuel system, which is afraid of low-quality diesel fuel and disables the nozzles, the intake system, which sometimes leads to burnout of the pistons and damage to the cylinder head. Add here the unsuccessful BTR DSI 6M11 assault rifle, assembled according to the principle, from the world by thread, a leaking all-wheel drive system, not the most durable suspension parts, an average level of painting and inexpensive interior plastic. Total, the chance to become a regular at the nearest service is extremely high. Although, if you choose the simplest version with a gasoline engine, manual transmission, and front-wheel drive, you can live quite tolerably with Action 2 for some time. Amulet became popular in the early 2000s because of its price. But even for such a small amount, this is one continuous disease, starting from the body and ending with the suspension. Everything on the amulet is made of very cheap material. The bodies rot right before our eyes, the engines crumble and eat oil, the hodavka falls apart, the interiors wear out. Buying such an amulet even for free is not the best idea. The Ford Kuga 2 is a hugely popular crossover that fell victim to Ford's experiments with powertrains. It turned out to be quite capricious diesel 2.0, it is very demanding on the quality of fuel and especially oil. Bad diesel immediately affects problems with injectors, high pressure pump, particulate filter and EGR system. But low quality or incorrect oil can cause problems inside the CPG. In addition, the timing chain was not famous for its reliability, which stretched rather quickly. The version boosted to 163 horsepower also has a turbine at risk. The 1.6 petrol turbo engine was again naughty due to dampness. The cooling system was not particularly tenacious, due to which the engine overheated with all the consequences. Another problem with the entire line of EcoBoost engines is the self-ignition of the fuel mixture, which, among other things, burned out the pistons. The reason turned out to be the use of oil with too much calcium, after which Ford transferred all turbo engines to another oil. The PowerShift robotic gearbox went through all the stages of the formation of the German DSG transmission, therefore it is unlikely that a complex of problems with clutches and gear shifts can be avoided. The all-wheel drive of the Ford Kuga is built on the basis of the Haldex clutch. Until 2009, there was a low-resource unit of the third generation. Later, a transmission of the next generation was installed, which lived much longer. The combination of a 2.5 petrol aspirated engine paired with a 6F35 automatic machine turned out to be the most reliable on the Kug. True, for unknown reasons, this version could only be front-wheel drive. Citroën captivated everyone with style and equipment. For little money you will have an automatic transmission, hydronuma, a stylish appearance and a bunch of goodies in the cabin. But from the very beginning, problems with the automatic transmission await you. Especially if you live in a region with harsh winters. Solenoids, blocks, and a bunch of everything related die. Then the engine starts to mope, which is extremely sensitive to oil and fuel. Well, the hydraulic suspension will be the icing on the cake. Imagine, one fine morning, you approach the car, and it lies on its belly. Add to all this the illiquidity of the Citroën C5 and we get a car that is not even worth considering for purchase. The first Tiguan, like many representatives of the VAG concern of the corresponding time, fell victim to new technologies and experimental systems. 
This, of course, is about gasoline turbo engines of the TSI family, with a volume of 1.4 and especially 2.0 liters. Individual owners squeezed all the juice out of the basic, but high torque engine, so that increased wear and thermal conditions led to detonation and, in advanced cases, burnout of the pistons. The 2.0 TSI engine delivered the most problems. The specific design of the timing chain drive led to the chain stretching and wearing out very quickly, which could lead to a jump with all the ensuing consequences. Another design and common engine problem is high oil consumption. Engineers were too smart with the piston system and specifically with special piston rings, which in reality were not operated as intended. As a result, a large amount of oil was sucked into the motor, which clogged the ducts and coped the system. The only effective method of struggle is to replace the piston with a modernized one. In addition, TSI gasoline engines do not like high mileage. Due to metal fatigue, piston breakage occurs, when at some point a piece simply falls off, which leads to a loss of compression. As for other units, both classic automatic machines and a DSG gearbox were installed on the Tiguan, the latter also regularly bothered the owners with known problems. In addition, the Tiguan of the first generation became famous to the heap for ABS malfunctions. Least of all problems with all-wheel drive. In general, if you are going to buy an age Volkswagen crossover, oddly enough, a diesel car will be the best choice, although there are some nuances there. Peugeot 308. Buying this car with an EP6 engine and AL4 automatic transmission is pure adventure. Of course, many cars have problems with engines and gearboxes, but for a WAD, everything can be multiplied by four. And even if by some miracle you don't have to get into power units for the next few kilometers after purchase, electronics or Hodavka will remind you of yourself. The Fawn has no liquidity either, so it's better to pass by. Citroën C4 Picasso is an electrician, this car is some kind of New Year's adventure, the main problems begin with it after 100, 000 km most likely they did not foresee our weather, cold, 30 degrees and the Frenchman loses consciousness. Motors are also unreliable, they can break down due to the quality of gasoline and the boxes are designed for a smooth ride, any race will quickly roll you into the service. Jaguar XFI in terms of equipment, interior quality and comfort, you can't fault it, but there's no liquidity. You probably notice that on the road you will meet a cat, extremely rarely. During operation, there will be problems with car maintenance. It is expensive, and there are very few specialists. In terms of technology, the XF is not very fragile, but the electronics and all sorts of blocks are lame on both legs. Land Rover Range Rover Sport only the deaf have not heard jokes about the fragility of the ranges. The problem, rather, lies in the fact that it simply cannot be repaired. There is a wheelbarrow, there is a problem, but they cannot do it, and riding on tow trucks begins. As a result, people begin to quickly merge the Range Rover, and the cars are not for sale yet. The powertrains of the Range Rover Sport are more or less, and the electronics live their own lives. Mercedes-Benz S-Class 220 is all stuffed with electronics. Inside it is like a comfortable apartment, double glazing, suction cups on the doors, telephones, massages, blowers, tables. However, all W22 blocks are connected to each other, and if one breaks, all the others will break. Only very experienced specialists will be able to deal with the problem, with whom, by the way, there is also a problem. When the pneuma dies, people do not restore it, but simply throw it away and put in ordinary springs. And so it is in almost everything. Merci, buy for show off or as a childhood dream, and then grow into the ground. I look forward to your comments. That's all for me, thank you all for your attention, I will be very grateful to you if you subscribe to the channel, see you soon.